Okay, we're looking at our garden this morning. In front of us is my main potato bed, and I have a hydrangea here. I also have a hydrangea on the other side. I just planted these. Uh, they're beautiful. I have one blue and one pink. But um, if anybody knows anything about hydrangeas, the color of their blossoms depends on the acidity of your soil, whether you have acidic soil or whether you have very, very alkaline soil. And so um, we just cut the blooms off these. Um, they, ha they were spent, so we deadheaded them. So it'll be interesting to see what color the, the new blossoms will be um, when they blossom. Over here, my medicinal bed is really starting to take off. My perennial ones, uh, I have lemon balm there, and then a, the stinging nettle, valerian. I have some leeks right there. Um, there's lavender, and then next to it's white whorehound, um, which is on the ground. And then in the back there, that big bushy stuff, that's yarrow. Uh, so those are coming up nicely. And then um, I also have some chives, which are right there. My lemongrass, which is that big clump of dead stuff, has not come up yet. Um, so we're still watching. I do have some planted just in case I need to replant. But lemongrass is usually a perennial. So we're waiting to see. Um, and patience is a virtue sometimes that gardeners need to exercise. So that's what's going on there. Um, this bed will be full um, uh, later on in the spring, early summer with other herbs. But for now, it's just the perennial ones that have come up. My uh, rose bed is really starting to take off. I have about six roses in here um, so far. And then I also have a catnip plant right there. And um, I have some grapes in the back. Um, so uh, that's really starting to take off. In the back, I had to replant my potatoes this year because um, in the spring we got so much rain that the potatoes I had planted over the fall last year actually rotted. So um, we have the potatoes up a little bit higher so they have a chance to drain and they're not going to be susceptible to rot this time. So I have um, purple ones planted back there. And then I'll have some Yukon Golds and Reds planted in this bed here with my mints and things like that. I have one more um, rose here. It's an orange velvet rose. And that'll climb up this trellis here make a beautiful arbor. And then I have some bee balm that's coming up there. The reason I left this here, let me see if I can show you. <clears throat> All right, there, there's a cocoon here, and that's a praying mantis cocoon. So we left that here because you actually want these guys in your garden. So that's why this is still here, because it's got a cocoon on it. <clears throat> My beds are starting to get planted. Um, I have um, bok choy and then uh, dinosaur kale and um, dwarf kale planted in this bed here. And then I'll plant lettuces back there in that bed that's next to the trellis because I'll get a little shade as the peas and stuff grow. So I'll have lettuce back there. And then um, I have tomatoes and peppers and things going in this bed here as well as this bed over here that's currently covered in jugs. These jugs I'll start moving out of the way so I can start planting. I also have carrots that are going in here too. So a lot going on. Um, it's the time of year to start planting the cool weather crops and um, I have plenty of them that have grown up um, as you can see my jugs here um, I have um, sunflower that's ready to be planted I actually have two of them the other ones over here but sunflower that's ready to be planted um, my spinach a lot of my lettuces this is just a couple I've already started planting um, rutabagas and turnips and things like that. My cool weather crops are ready to plant so I'm getting them all lined up, getting them opened up, acclimated to um, the surroundings out here before I plant them so I don't stress them too much. But being in milk jugs they're used to the weather out here just not being blown around and things like that because they're in an enclosed environment. So these are some of the other milk jugs. As you can see I moved quite a few around um, since the last time I took a video because I've been uh, using them. <clears throat> Over here is the bed I got finished yesterday. I have turnips along this edge here 
um, interplanted with onions. I have Brussels sprouts there, interplanted with marigolds. And rutabagas, interplanted with shallots. They're all companion plants in this bed. They'll work together to keep the, the root worms out that won't eat the, the uh, my root plants, my turnips and my rutabagas. And then um, the Brussels sprouts also um, are benefiting from being with these guys. <clears throat> Okay, I'll take you over here to my comparison. This just amazed me. This is direct seeded um, container gardening with um, lettuce. Um, that's bloom, uh, trumpeter lettuce in the back there. And then I have a Bloomsdale spinach there. And then I have some romaine and stuff back there. As you can see, it's not very impressive. I mean, I do have some beautiful little sprouts yet. But these were planted um, at the same time as my milk jugs. And let's show you my milk jug right here. See the difference? Those are huge. Those are tiny. So this is definitely the way to go to give your um, seedlings a head start. And then, see, you saw that I had overseeded that milk jug that's got really full. So what I've been doing is I take the extra seeds, or the extra seedlings when I plant, and I put them in these flats here, um, that way they can um, be sold later on um, the season. <clears throat> I'll take you over here to my workshop, my greenhouse. We kind of make it into more of a workshop because the um, temperature can't really be um, regulated. It's either too hot or too cold. So um, this is where I kind of work to get things done right now. So right here is some trumpeter lettuce, and this is uh, a clump clump that was in here. As you can see, there's there's lots of little seedlings here, quite a few little seedlings. So what I do is I'll um, plant each one into these trays here, and uh, let them grow a little bit, um, get their roots reestablished, and then I'll um, sell these as as seedlings for the landscaping business. Um, I also uh, do propagation. I have bee balm down there propagating from the mother plant that I have. I've got quite a few things I've been propagating. I've also had some duds this year as far as winter sowing. I've got some uh, ones that just did not grow. There's like nothing in there. So what I've been doing, and it's mostly operator error. Um, I did something wrong. I'm not sure what, but um, what I do is I just open them up, um, remove the the bad seeds or, or whatever and um, replant and uh, tape them back up again in the warmer weather and hopefully it's it correct this time and uh, they'll sprout. Uh, it's still early May so uh, planting in here gives them even just a little bit of a head start than waiting till um, the later part of May to plant them in the ground. So I still got some time uh, to get them done so I have a better chance of good growth this year. And then I'll take you out to my last place. These are the other plants that I've been propagating from my own stock. I have valerian here from my large valerian plant. I have rhubarb from my rhubarb plant. My elderberry, I had a shoot from that that I planted by itself. And then this is um, a philodendron um, that I've been trying to get to grow a little better. I was a little shocked inside, so um, I've been putting it out here, uh, giving it some nutrients and things, and it's really starting to take off a little bit. And then I'll up-pot that before I take it back indoors. <clears throat> and then last but not least, I'll take you over to this area, which we've had some improvement in. <clears throat> over here, I finally got my elderberries planted. Got the one there and the one there. I have a Johns and an Adams, and I'm not sure which one's which, but um, you're supposed to have two different types of elderberries. That way they can cross-pollinate each other and they produce fruit that way. So I have a Johns and an Adams. So they're finally planted in there and they're happy in their new home. This area is kind of swampy. That's why it's been a junk area because it's just been swamp and you can't do nothing with this area. But with the Back to Eden method, um, we put a bunch of straw down for now and that will help absorb the moisture and, and make it not so soggy. And we'll add more wood chips and stuff later. But for now, we have a bunch of old straw that's from over the winter 
um, <clears throat> butting up against our well house and different things that that needs to be used because it's rotting so we just threw it down here for now and uh, that'll work out nicely and then over here this is where I'm starting to move my milk jugs to out of the garden so they're out of the way and then this is my um, all my plots, or flats, excuse me, from my winter sowing, except for the um, mints. Uh, but like the chamomile in here, which is right here, um, that's all from winter sown plots. The chives is a propagation or a division from my chive plant. Um, but uh, my kale, my lettuce, and then I got quite a few um, seedlings of alyssum. And then uh, cabbage. Um, those are all right there, uh, winter sown in jugs. And from two uh, jugs, because like I said, I overseeded, I got four flats of um, Alyssa. Not sure where my girls are cranky, so please excuse them. They're just really cranky today. Maybe because it's supposed to rain. But anyways, that's what's going on. Um, Winter sowing works. As you can see, I have lots and lots of seedlings from that. The Back to Eden method works. Um, as you can see, this whole area, I have minimal weeds. Uh, you can see a few here and there, but minimal weeds um, going on. And then, um, you know, things are pretty vibrant and healthy. I will show you a couple things. This is a second year garden. So a lot of this organic material is not quite broken down yet. So what I have to do in order to get things to grow properly is where I plant uh, my, my seedlings, I actually have to dig a hole for them and fill the hole with dirt, a nice size hole with dirt. Uh, that way when they grow, their roots are going into the dirt and not into the mulch around. My mulch is about uh, three to four inches thick. So I have to make sure that they have dirt to grow into because trying to put seedlings down into the soil down three to four inches um, they would get uh, just consumed by by the mulch and stuff. So I give them uh, their own little dirt haven and then um, as they grow the, um, the mulch and stuff will be put back around them and they'll continue to grow. Um, the way that I have my beds laid out this year, um, I'm planning on doing it next year, so I won't have to do the same thing next year. The dirt will already be there, as well as more organic material that's broken down and things of that sort. And um, so that's just what I have to do for now. Some um, back to Eden gardeners have to do that because we don't have access to the compost and things like that when we're putting down our, our wood chips. Um, so you make do with what you got, you make it work, and most of all, um, I do this um, with um, the Lord, um, blessing and leading. And so this is how I make it work. So I hope you guys are enjoying my videos. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always comment in the box below. Please like the video um, if you do like it and share it with your friends on social media. And be sure to subscribe to my channel to keep updated on what's going around, on around here on our homestead. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you guys soon. This is Garden Jen with Garden Jen's Journey.